uh, uh, before we start, are there any Monty Python fans here? Okay, so do you remember the sentence? And now for something completely different. So hi, my name is Dr. Boaz Ben David. I'm going to talk to you about spiders in older age. We'll start with a story about a spider, an idea, a real life example. We'll play two games, not one, I promise two games. And then we'll end with the two take home messages. So let's start with this slide. Uh, I want to share with you uh, my passion. And my passion starts in this picture in 1879 in Leipzig. So this is the true birthplace of psychology, not Freud, way before Freud was born. This is where we started. I see some people nodding here, so you know this. And in those times, they believed that psychologists cannot be just an expert of psychology. Any psychologist needed to be also a biologist, a medical doctor, understand the social environment, and a psychologist. You had to know everything. Unfortunately, since then, all of us, including myself, who are experts on one thing, on one tiny thing, expert on this point here in my eye, on just the right ear, on the inner canal of the left ear of a monkey. Well, expert on one thing. What I'm trying to do is to work with a lot of smart people who are willing to work with me, fortunately, and to try to convince them that when we study aging, we have to look at everything together. So I take my moving circus and I go to a conference of psychologists and I tell them, look, you have to think about vision and about hearing and about the medical issues of aging if you want to understand what goes on. And they tell me, oh, you boys, yes, yes, you go to the doctors. So I take my moving circus and I go to a conference of medical doctors and I tell them, look, you cannot just study hearing. You cannot give a person a hearing aid if you do not understand the cognitive issues, the social issues, the fact that some people will be ashamed of putting a hearing aid. You need to understand all that. And they look at me and they tell me, oh, Boaz, you're a psychologist. Go to the psychologist back. So I'm trying to move with my circus and convince us that in aging, we have to look at the full picture. And to give you an example, I'm going to tell the story about a spider. I just want to assure you, no real spiders were harmed during the story, OK? Just a story, not reality. So uh, the med scientist wanted to train uh, his spider. He wanted to train him to jump. Uh, the idea was that when you see this, you jump, OK? Very simple. You see this, and you jump. Now, of course, training a spider takes a lot of time. So for three months, he didn't watch cricket. He had to stay and work day in, day night, stay at night. And he just couldn't leave the office. But after three months, he finally managed to train his spider to jump when he sees this. Now he started his study. He wanted to see the relationship between vision and cognition. So on day one, he anesthetized one eye. So he put one eye to sleep, did this, and the spider jumped. Great. Day two, anesthetized two eyes, did this, study jumped. Great. Day three, three eyes, four eyes, five eyes. And as you know, a spider has eight eyes. You can Google it. Don't, not now, later. So at day eight, he anesthetized all eight eyes. He did this, and the spider didn't jump. Did this again, and the spider didn't jump. So he went on and published a paper in science with this heading. A spider without eyes cannot think. It's ridiculous, of course. The spider, of course, could not see. But we make the same mistake when we work with the aging. Same mistake, but we do it with human beings. We, miss, uh, we, we mix up difficulties in vision, difficulties in hearing, with difficulties in cognition. We miss the point. We just many times neglect to test vision and hearing or to relate the difficulty we see in cognition to these problems. Let me give you an example. So the theory I'm trying to discuss today is the information degradation hypothesis. The idea is that we usually say age will relate to a decrease in cognitive performance. You are old and you're not smart, right? But we're trying to see whether there is a mediating factor when we consider vision and hearing, and we can see it in many studies, we can understand a lot about the changes in cognitive performance. 
So if I pause here my talk, I'm a cognitive psychologist, but if you want to relate it to a city, or to your restaurant, or to your building, or to your bank, or to your hospital, considering these two may improve the cognitive performance of a person entering your place, whether it's city or hospital. So let's understand what I mean. The basic idea is this. If I will now start talking like this, okay, or do this when I talk, you will, it will be more difficult to understand my speech. It will distort the information. You will need to work harder to understand what I said, and you have less capacity available to take it to the next level. So I'm going to focus now not on hearing, I'm going to focus on vision, because it's much easier to explain, and let's start with some lovely story. So story number one. Um, it comes from a student of mine. Uh, we have a lot of foreign students here at IDC. She, she's British. Her father came to visit her for the holidays. And she told me that they went together to a restaurant. And he told her, look, I can't read the menu. Could you choose for me? And she complained about that. I told her, he should complain about you. You shouldn't complain about him. What are you doing? I asked her, do you like to choose your own food? Like, for example, today at lunch? Or do you want somebody else to choose your food for you? I said, of course I like to choose my food. I love coriander. My father doesn't like coriander. I said, exactly. But what happens in the restaurant, we have, you know, now great lighting that gives atmosphere, right? So it's dark. And they use fancy fonts like red on orange or green on yellow, so it looks nice. What happens is as we age, we can't see the font at all, right? So instead of just saying, I can't read the font, I don't know what goes on, there is a simple solution. So if you take your phone, you know, that can read your fingertips, and now it can scan your iris. Have you seen the new one? Scan your iris and send rockets to the moon. It also has another feature. You know what the feature is? Flashlight. So that's what I do. When I enter a, a restaurant, I open my flashlight so I can read the menu, right? I did not become stupid the moment the light was dim. It was just difficult to see. But my daughter sitting next to me might say, was is becoming older, right? So we again confuse vision, hearing, and cognition. Here is another example. Uh, this is where I get to mock my wife, the best part of the day. So my wife, bless her soul, she's a social worker. This is why you all have to say, oh, right? My wife is a social worker, that's life. And uh, bless her soul, she volunteered for one year in the hospital. And she was there volunteering, you know, with her nice name tag and whatnot. And the lady came to her and told her, can you tell me where is the eye clinic? And my wife was thinking, this lady is in trouble. Behind her, on the wall, was the eye clinic. And she said, can she see it behind me? OK, she's old, and she's stupid, and has dementia, right. But because my wife is a social worker, she started to chat up with that lady. She found out she's super intelligent, super capable. There is one problem. She had these drops in her eyes to dilate her pupils, you know, before you do surgery. So she couldn't see well. You know what I'm talking about? You dilate your pupil? So she couldn't see anything. But what my wife did was confuse, again, vision with cognition. The thing we do all day long when we work with seniors. Here is a cute example from a study I'm running right now. I'm running it because I love the name, right? Isn't it the best name for a study ever? Size matters? So we test really if size matters. We take IQ tests that were standardized for young 18-year-old students, because this is what we do in science. We are so smart, right? I'm testing it on 70-year-olds. And I do one thing. I increase the font. That's all I do. I increase the font. I want to see if it will affect, if changing the size of the page will gain seniors a few points in IQ. Because if this is true, that means we're even the IQ tests we're conducting are biased. I don't have all the data yet. We only have 80 people. But I can tell you already that when we ask people reading comprehension, you know these tests? reading comprehension, which is sort of the basic thing we do all day long, we found that increasing the font has increased the chances of people of succeeding in these tests. But again, this is very preliminary data. The, the jury is still out. But it starts to look like there's something there. 
And you know what? Let's just conduct an experiment together. We're going to do it all together. We're going to do, uh, of course, my favorite boys versus girls. So let's start with the girls. All you have to do now, I'll show you a matrix. You have five seconds to choose what's the missing part. Don't shout. Don't let the boys cheat. Just raise your hand if you know the missing part. Ready? One, two, three, go. Okay, just raise your hands if you know what's the missing part. You don't have to say it. Okay, boys, don't cheat, only girls. Okay, now boys, are you ready? One, two, three, go. Is this more difficult? Why is this more difficult? Because you can't see. You see, I'm right. Cognition is related to vision. If it's hard to see, it's hard to solve the problem. Same thing goes when you move your, your eyewear or when you try to read the menu in the restaurant. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Skype. I was in a postdoc in Toronto for six years and my mother wanted to Skype with my daughter. This is how our phone looked in the beginning. Knowing vision and cognition, I know that one of the things that change as we age is our difficulty at inhibiting irrelevant information. We need to decrease the noise level. So the first thing I did was I cleaned it up. Then we know that we need to increase the size. I increased the size. Of course, this is blue on blue. Now, some little bit of research. For eight years, the most commonly used test for selective attention is the Stroop test. This is Mr. Stroop. He had one paper. I wish my paper was like his. His paper gets millions of citation. This is Googling it. In 0.27 seconds, you get 800,000. It's, if you do Google Scholar, everything Stroop is super unique in our world. So let's see what we have to do here. All you have to do is just name the font color, just the color, from top to down. I will circle three and let's do it together. Okay, so what we have here, together. Green, blue, yellow, excellent. And now, oh, sorry, up, just the font color. Yellow, red, and blue. That wasn't easy, right? That's the whole idea of Stroop. What you have here to do is to inhibit the word and focus on the color. So if you said red, green, and yellow, you're wrong, right? It is yellow, red, and blue. Try it at home. It's a lovely game. What we know from tons and tons and tons and tons of paper is that seniors are bad in this study. And this is used as a fact, as a proof that as we age, we have difficulties in inhibition. What we try to do with my team is see whether it could be that seniors just have difficulties in color vision. And we know that as we age, we have huge difficulties in color vision, studying age age of 50, and specifically with the color blue. This is why sometimes you see elderly ladies with the blue hair, right? We lose the photoreceptor, the blue photoreceptor as we age. It's the first one that we lose. So what I did is I desaturated the color set. I took young adults, 18-year-old students, and they did this. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see. This is yellow, blue, and red. And now again, blue. Ugh. Ah, help me out here. It's a yellow. Thank you. Thank you. Never mind. I'm, my vision is not as good. What we found that that was enough in four papers, including a meta-analysis and this study and other studies with other groups, we saw that it is enough to change the colors to cause all of my young adults to behave like 70-year-olds. So what happened? How could I age people? I didn't take a chisel and, you know, and a hammer and hammered it into their head. All I did was change the color. And suddenly, by letting young adults experience the color vision of an older adult, in this study that's the golden standard of cognition, they all failed miserably. And we did it in the meta-analysis, and we're changing the thought colors, and with other population, even with Alzheimer patients, we see again and again the same issue. Our tools are biased. So now for the favorite part. What can we do? After soldiers came back from Vietnam War to the US, they started doing this, right? Everywhere. We need to do the same thing with thinking about sensory accessibility. Sensory accessibility means measuring the echo we have in the room. I know huge windows are beautiful, but they create echo, which is a difficulty as we age. We should think about the noise levels in the room. We should think about 
people with hearing aids in our audience. We should think about vision. I know that light yellow on light green is beautiful, but it's horrible in font. I have, I have some pictures, I don't have them here, of a hospital where all the wings are written in yellow on green. You can't see it. I could, I could hardly see it. So what are you doing in the hospital, right? And finally, take home message. Double take home message. Number one, when we test seniors, if we actually test them in a lab, as I do, we have to take into consideration sensory changes. Number two, when we design, we have to consider that a large part, a growing cohort of our population are going to be older adults. I'm sure you know the numbers all over the world, in India and in Israel, the fastest growing cohort are older adults. They are some of our clients. When you design a city, when you design a building, when you design a hospital. We have to be cognizant of these small changes that could make a huge difference in the quality of life of the person. And to finally say, seniors are way better than you think. Thank you very much.